What's up guys, my name is Miguel, this is Rastawash, and on this video we're gonna continue painting our vintage Space Crusades. So buckle up, brush lickers, because it's going to be a wild ride. I was super undecided on how to choose the color scheme for my Space Marines. On the one hand, I could use the one from the box. On the other hand, there are many other examples from the old Hammer era that would fit them perfectly. And that's why I asked you guys on my channel to tell me which one do you prefer. And you said that you would like to see the Renegades paint jobs. On the cards from the game, you can see that the Space Marines from the Chaos faction are actually green. And I think it's a color that fits them perfectly because the Loyalist Marines are going to be either red, blue or yellow. Green is going to be different enough so nobody gets confused when we are playing the game. So without further ado, let's get to it. I've literally been itching to paint these miniatures for weeks. These are my favorite models of all of the Space Crusade. Superhuman, demonically possessed warriors in power armor? Yes, thank you. I would love to paint that. And now, all that remains is leaving these miniatures for 10-15 minutes until the coat of contrast dries and then I'm gonna try something new. I'm going to use a sharpie marker to paint the gold trim on the power armor. And I'm also going to try these Gundam markers, which, well, maybe they can do the trick. If I can save time with this, it's gonna be great. Wish me luck. With all the gold trim that these miniatures have, I thought it was worth a shot trying to paint them with something that I thought that was going to be faster. How about using Gundam markers? They paint very nice coats of gold color and I thought it was a good idea, but I soon realized that it was going to take much more time than I expected. And the reason, obviously, as you can see now, is that the tip of the marker is a little bit too thick and getting inside those small crevices that the miniatures had was not as easy and as straightforward as I expected. What at first looked like a good idea, because I thought I was going to save quite a lot of time, didn't turn out to be such a great idea, honestly. These miniatures have small details and this is just a little bit too thick for them. The color is great and the coverage is quite good, but it is very difficult to control for me. If your pulse is not great and you are not used to using brushes, they actually have quite a lot of benefits. But if you have to go into those small gaps that the miniatures have, it's going to become difficult. I'm gonna go back to my old friend over here, the number four Winsor & Newton Sable Series 7. At the end of the day, I'm used to using brushes and, well, if you have a good one and you are used to doing that, why try new things sometimes? I wanted to paint them fast, but I didn't want to do it as fast as I did with my Gen Steelers. For these miniatures, I decided to take some time and actually have fun with them when I was painting them. And you will see that I'm going to use a few highlights here and there. Not too many, or maybe yes, I don't know. But I wanted them to look great. There are three main colors that we're gonna focus on beyond the gold parts. And those are the green of the armor, the red of certain areas of the miniatures, as well as a contrasting dark black with some blue hues. And this is how we're gonna do all of it. Let's start with this paint job over here that you can see I'm painting with Ijandan yellow and that is going to be the base for that particular very yellowish oranges red that we can see in the miniatures of the era. And then I'm going to also give the base coat for the black bluish areas with the color that you see on the screen right now. The regular Chaos Space Marines, I decided to paint the armor mostly green. But for the commander, I decided to switch things a little bit and make it look more imposing. And for that, I changed the colors and I was going to paint him mostly black. The bolt guns and the bolters and also the rocket launcher and other heavy weapons that I had at my disposal, I decided to paint them dark color. But for the commander, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. For all the miniatures, once we have done these base coats, we're gonna give them a wash with non oil.
with cryptic armor shade we are going to paint all the gold and metallic areas and in some cases we can even use this wash to create more contrast between the yellow and the surrounding areas of those parts With the base coats already done, we're going to start building up the colors. For the red, we're going to use Angron Red Air color. And for the blue areas, like in this miniature, we're going to start working with Lebanon Blue. Take notice how I paint only inside the areas, leaving the borders with the original color. This is creating basically the highlights for us by focusing our washes in the right area. I am going to emphasize how important is having the right brush for this particular job and it's because you actually have to be very focused of where you're shading now. Little by little you're gonna build up those colors and by focusing the shading in the right places you're going to create a lot of three-dimensionality just by using washes. Basically we're painting the other way around as we will do by layering just by focusing subsequent shading in deeper and deeper recesses to create volumes. The power axe of the commander was something that I was not really sure how to paint. I actually ended up doing something quite interesting, so stay tuned until the end of the video to see what happened with that. Notice here I'm just shading in the inside of the cheeks of this helmet to create a more concave look. We are looking towards creating more volumes by just adding washes in the right places. I am very pleased of how this deep red turned out to be. And it's very simple to achieve. We start with a coat of Yandan yellow, follow it with a glaze of Angron red clear, and then start shading with contrast bulb red and a last dark shade of Sigval burgundy. It was working with this red and the dark blue that you see now that I started thinking, what am I gonna paint next on my Space Crusade? Leave in the comments below which faction of the Loyalist Marines you would like to see first painted in Rush Wash. So we have these colors built already. Now it's time to give some highlights. But not only that, when you highlight miniatures, you run in the risk of getting them too strong. Therefore, you have to add a little bit of shading once again. I'm working on my green. Here we're going to be adding some shading. But I decided to do this in two different ways. As I work with the miniatures, in some of them, I started by working on shading, and in others, I started with working by highlighting. For highlighting, I use the new favorite color that I have in my collection, which is Ice Yellow by AK Interactive. It works basically with any color that I throw it at, and it's such a neutral tone that it takes very well placing on top of that if I overdo the highlights like I've done in a couple of these miniatures. So let's check out how I actually build up those volumes in these flat surfaces. Highlighting Space Marines is very straightforward, not usually, but these guys in particular have a lot of small details and also quite organic surfaces. I'm only using Ice Yellow in all of them. I don't really care about using any other colors because I think this is gonna make it look much more natural but it's still kind of that middle hammer era look of colorful miniatures. Once again, having a very sharp, very good brush is paramount here. My Windsor & Newton is a number four and I'm quite surprised that I'm using such a big brush, but I got used to using it and it holds so much paint that I barely need to reload it between coats. Okay, but there is this risk involved on using such a desaturated color for 
you know, highlighted. And it is that it's going to make it look chalky. The good thing about ice yellow compared to white is that it has this warm hue and it doesn't become as chalky. But in some cases, I will still need to make sure that I regain the original color from the miniature. And that's where glazing slowly and carefully with intent and purpose and focusing on those areas that I really want to address is the best bet here. This doesn't mean that you have to paint all the highlights, but only those areas that you think that are a little bit too much. The metallic areas of the miniatures are going to receive a similar treatment, in this case highlights, but we're going to use obviously metallic colors because otherwise they are not going to look that great. On my bionic leg, after I highlight it, I also gonna do a little bit of glazing here and there using brown and later a blue to make it look more interesting. It's a scratch build, it's not the best thing that I could ever do, but I think it still looks the part in this Space Marines Renegades from Chaos. I wanted to include a couple of details in the miniatures. One of them is drawing this Star of Chaos on the forehead of the regular Space Marines. And the other one was working with the power axe of my commander. Power weapons need to be interesting looking. If I painted it only with metal, it wouldn't be that striking and it wouldn't look that menacing. And this is actually a very powerful weapon in close combat. So I wanted to address that by using a technique that I've shown you in a previous video, which is painting it as if it was in flames. That will create the impression that it's an energy weapon and the magma theme, I think it makes it look like it's demonic in nature. So I think it's a very good technique that goes perfectly with these miniatures and it's gonna go and make it look even more chaotic. What do you think? If you like it, I've left a link above, as you can see over there, and you can check the video where I explain how to do this in more detail. So this is my Chaos Commander with its power axe, and these are the Legionnaires. These Chaos Renegades also have some extra weapons that the box contains, so maybe if I feel frisky, I could try to put them in the game from time to time. No matter what, I think my players, whenever they face them, they're gonna crap their pants and also feel very happy that they have such wonderful enemies against them. What do you think? I'm pretty sure these dudes are gonna create a lot of trouble in the table from now on. Watch this video next, and if you haven't done it yet, consider subscribing. Remember, my name is Miguel, this has been Rush to Wash. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso, adios.